So a quick recap on the, the bubble plates and how I actually assembled them and made them. So here we have a glass chamber. And what I do is I just, I've unscrewed the four nuts that were on the top. Take the top off. And then we have the glass chamber itself. Take that off. And this is what we're really after right now is this seal. So I'm going to lift that out. And we'll place the seal over in the copper. And of course you take it right up to the edge. Just so you don't waste any material. Using a, a Sharpie, a fairly sharp one, because uh, you don't want a thick one. So get a fairly sharp tip Sharpie. Draw around the outside. Draw on the inside. Figure out where your center is. Lay out the four. And then mark out your four holes. So what I did is I actually made a drilling template. So does it have to be dead accurate? No, not dead accurate. It can be out just a little bit. That's fine. You're not going to see too much of a problem there. And I do have four, three up, one down in my bubble chamber. So <clears throat> now what I do from there is I'll go over to the bandsaw, cut out my copper, take it over to a belt sander, and I'll just run it around the belt sander to try and get it as close to round as I can. Once again, doesn't that be perfect? That's fine. Close is good enough on these. And you'll notice that I've got three holes of one size and one hole bigger. Well, there's a reason for that. So I put, from the belt sander, I just put it in. Make sure it's set in nice. And Typically, when you put the glass in, you're going to put the seal in first. So now the whole assembly is sealed, and it's not going to leak. So really a very simple, very fast way of doing this. <clears throat> so now that I have the bubble plate made, I'll just set this aside for now. And here we get, now in the U.S., there's a store called Harbor Freight. And Harbor Freight has these. Uh, actually, they have the bigger ones. Um, they may have both sizes, but double check. So these are actually from a plasma cutter. They're the tips for a plasma cutter. And they're just perfectly suited for this task. It requires the least amount of work. So what I've done is I've drilled the holes in the top. And now I'm just about to tap them with 632. And then I can do my screws and we'll see the bottom here. Okay, so there's there's just a regular half inch end cap. I drilled the center hole close to it, so at least close. And then what I did is I actually made up a little uh, template. I'll drop in pretty hard to do with one hand while you're holding the camera. So I'll drop it in there and I'll use this template to figure out how I'm going to cut it. And I'll just do it right in my lap with a cutting wheel on my Dremel. Takes a little bit of time. Take your time. you got no issue there. And uh, I have this set. This this actually marking the height. So I'll take my Sharpie. I'll go around so that I have my height for sure. And then I'll do all my cut down cuts. And then I'll come back, pull it out. And I'll come back with the, uh, the cutoff wheel and just get right to the line in each one. And then when I go do the other one, when I go do this one, which is the down one, it's the bigger one, it's the down one, I'm going to solder on a little piece of half-inch tube on here. I'll sit right onto there, and I can solder that right on. So, and then I'll, you'll see that, or you've already seen it in uh, the photo, so you'll see that shortly.
right, so now it should be uh, just drilling out the holes for the vapors to come through. I've already tapped the top. So that's a 632 tap in there. And now I'm just using just a simple little thing to sit here and put it in there. All the others I've done with the drill press, um, I can't get to the drill press right now, so I'm just going to straight drill through. So I straight drill through, rotate 9 degrees, you can actually line it up with the edges as you, uh, once you rotate it, and then drill through again. And once again, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I believe, I'm using the, the same drill bit that I used to tap for the 632. I believe that's a 732nd. So and it's 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 adequate. I mean, I've watched the uh, the bubble plates already made, and they're doing an excellent job. So I don't see any reason to change. You know, maybe down the road I'll make the holes a little bigger, but from what I saw, I don't need to. And this doesn't have to be perfect either. If it's out a bit, it's out a bit. No big deal. You know, get close. Uh, I wish I was a little more accurate, but uh, yeah, I'm all right with it. So this is just. A quick, uh, you know, I did a lot of searching on the internet on how to do a lot of this, and I just couldn't find a complete procedure for someone who's, uh, you know, at their home. So this is just a quick, dirty how-to, and, uh, you know, the results seem to work perfect. So I'm happy enough with this process, and it's simple enough. It's all just hand tools. So give it a whirl, guys, and uh, enjoy. Alright, so this is the last thing you need to do before you uh, assemble the whole thing. So all I did is I just cut a little piece of uh, half inch tube, sanded everything, put some flux on, and then just uh, put a little bit of solder in. So, you know, the height is roughly close to what I want. Might be a little bit short, but I'm okay with that. And we got some flux sitting in there, not too bad, or some solder. Screws might be a bit long, that's my only concern, but so far everything I've seen with the way these are working, I have no issue. So we'll see how this one works tomorrow, and uh, I may have to come back and make that tube a little bit longer for the down. So you can see that one's a bit. So I'll just grab this one now. It's still a little bit warm, I just finished soldering it. Let me just take that. And I just plopped right in. There. Let's check to see how hot that is before I put a rubber seal on. Yeah, that's, that's fine. There's a rubber seal. Let me just put the glass down. Top on. That's all in. And put the four nuts back on. Now keep in mind, you've added a plate down here. So you've lifted it up just a little bit. So you're going to have a little bit of a gap here. Um, so watch when you're tight. Don't try to tighten right back down these nuts. Um, now this one got loosened off on its own, but this one's probably pretty close. So I'm just going to tighten it up in a little bit. Um, doesn't have to be overly tight. And the seals do all the work, so you know, we don't have to crank right down onto it. I'm going to just finger tight all these, and then just give them about a quarter to a half turn with the wrench. And that should be probably sufficient. See how this puppy fires up tomorrow. Now that's that's all you're gonna see because I'm actually gonna take that apart and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna wash that flux out on that one. That's the only one I soldered, so I gotta take that and rinse it out and make sure there's no flux left in the system. I've already done my uh, sacrificial alcohol run and my vinegar run, so I want to do this plate individually.
which that's the nicest thing about these is uh, you can throw them in the dishwasher hole and uh, we'll go through the dishwasher okay or you can just take it apart like that you can take all the caps apart and just throw everything in the citric acid bath and that cleans it right up so essentially what I'll do is after each run I'm probably just going to throw it in the dishwasher to clean out the whole chamber but once I see these starting to get black then they're going to come out go for a citric bath and I'll take them apart make sure all the particles are out and all the holes are nice and clean but uh yeah I'm very happy with how this is looking so far and I'm very happy with how it's uh, working in the still.